Okay, boys, full disclosure right off the hop, I'm no expert on anything, especially uh, drive uh, line systems, um, especially all wheel drive systems. But I have been interested um, to actually uh, try and figure out how the uh, Suzuki SX4's all wheel drive system actually functions completely different from uh, other products Suzuki produces, namely the Vitara, which is a, a full time four wheel drive system. Um, the SX4 is, of course, an all-wheel drive system. That is to say there's three different modes of operation. There's a two-wheel drive, uh, auto, which gives the car capacity to transfer power as required, and uh, the four-wheel lock mode, which does exactly as, uh, as, the, as the name implies. An all-wheel drive system, uh, the SX4's all-wheel drive system, actually consists of a number of sensors that we'll look at. Uh, control module, the four-wheel drive control module itself, and of course an output. The output in this case is the electromagnetic uh, coupler, uh, and and we'll see how that actually operates. This, as I said, that is the uh, the heart of the matter. How this system actually functions. We have our uh, engine, of course, and our crankshaft. Uh, Self-explanatory. Uh, the power from the in that the engine actually generates transferred via the uh, the crankshaft and flywheel out to the uh, to the bell housing where of course the clutch actually lives um, the clutch assembly uh, if in court if assuming of course it's engaged I'm talking about manual transmission here of course boys that is the case with my vehicle um, if the uh, clutch assembly is actually engaged it will transfer power through the gearbox depending on what gear you actually have selected on the input shaft and on the counter shaft of the actual gearbox assembly itself it transfers power through the uh, to the final drive um, uh, into the differential itself. This is basically front wheel drive mode, if you will, boys. The uh, the power is actually transferred to the differential, and there's a, um, a coaxial type arrangement where there's a through shaft and an outer shaft that allows the uh, drive to the front wheels and to the uh, transfer case uh, bevel gears, the uh, drive and the pinion to actually operate independently as you can imagine uh, that that would be a, a requirement otherwise it'd be a non-starter of course so here you can see uh, some vehicles i'm used to calling a transfer case um, um, power takeoff i guess is some other terminology other people use suzuki calls it strictly a transfer i guess but appreciate that this is the pickoff arrangement where the power is split between the front and the rear uh, wheels. But appreciate the propeller shaft is constantly turning uh, and regardless of what mode the uh, vehicle is actually uh, operating in. Keep that in mind. The propeller shaft is constantly turning regardless of the mode that the vehicle is actually operating in. Okay, so that's fair enough. Um, as far as the mechanicals are concerned, uh, back to the rear end, we have the coupler. God damn it, I keep moving this. We have the coupler uh, itself. Um, there's a clutch pack in there. It's electromagnetically controlled. Um, so the whole the whole reason that, that I got interested in this, boys, to be honest, is I'm back there under my vehicle one day and I'm looking at the wiring that goes to the uh, to the coupler assembly, and I'm thinking it's like 20 gauge wire, 18 gauge wire. How can wiring that's that light possibly control? A magnetic clutch that's strong enough to transfer the power in an all-wheel drive vehicle it can't and sure enough it doesn't what we have is wiring back to the magnetic uh, coil assembly which is actually controlling um, it's an electromechanical uh, clutch uh, so the electro uh, portion of it is just the coil which controls a me mechanism a pilot mechanism which then controls the main clutch proper inside the assembly so once I realized that, that actually made a lot more sense with respect to the light gauge wiring going to the uh, <clears throat> coupler itself. So once the uh, coupler is either engaged or disengaged, the drive would come back to the rear differential. And of course, the rear differential operates just as a differential uh, normally does, of course. Uh, we have the, uh, the pinion and um, uh, crown gear, if you will, ring gear that drives the uh, carrier assembly and uh, inside the uh, side gears and spider gears uh, operating as a differential in order to split the uh, the power between the uh, wheels. Of course, the four different wheels uh, operate on different turning radiuses and uh, unless the vehicle is in a straight line, they're pretty much all turning at different uh, 
at different speeds, of course, hence the requirement for a front and a rear differential. And yeah, so that's pretty typical, right? Um, it is, in fact, an open differential. So although we're calling it all-wheel drive, boys, uh, that's about a stretch, really, with respect to two open differentials. And um, as we know, the power will go to the late, latest loaded uh, wheel on the axle, right? So nothing new there. Um, sensors. Uh, the wheel speed sensors uh, are obviously critical inputs to the uh, four-wheel drive module. And there's uh, many other inputs as well. Um, there's inputs via the CAN bus which is actually noted on here, I think, uh, the CAN, actually exchanges information between the engine control module, uh, the anti-skid uh, or uh, ABS uh, electronic stability program module uh, in the car, uh, also exchanges information over the CAN bus with the uh, all-wheel drive control module. Uh, the yaw rate sensor and the steering angle sensor are all also taken into account. As is, of course, what mode is the vehicle actually operating in? Is it two-wheel drive, auto, or are we in the four-wheel lock mode of operation? So that's just a, uh, basically uh, an overview of the entire system here, boys. And we'll look at stuff in a wee bit more detail. Uh, we'll look at some different drawings to do so. But, as I said, if you appreciate nothing from this drawing, appreciate that everything in red uh, operates all the time, including the propeller shaft and including uh, the input side of the uh, magnetic coupler uh, with respect to the, uh, to the drive to the rear wheels. So quite a lot of stuff is actually driven. Um, unlike uh, some other vehicles that you may be familiar with where a transfer case arrangement is actually selectable and the drive doesn't go back to the propeller shaft unless you're actually in four wheel drive mode of operation, let's see. Um, we have um, the four-wheel drive, and they do call it a four-wheel drive control module, uh, actually located up on the uh, top of the dash here, right behind the uh, information display. Uh, you can lift the plastic panel and access the four-wheel drive control module there. Uh, the enunciation for the different modes, of course, two-wheel drive is not enunciated. Uh, auto mode and uh, four-wheel lock are, in fact, enunciated on the uh, right-hand side of the instrument panel right here. Um, you can see, of course, as you might well imagine, back at the rear differential, there's the rear differential assembly there, uh, bolted onto the front of that is the uh, actual coupler assembly itself. So this is actually the, um, um, the casing, and within this actually sits the coupler itself. Uh, down on the uh, console is where you can actually select two-wheel uh, auto or four-wheel lock. On top of the, uh, the uh, casting there is actually an air temp sensor. Um, as you can imagine, the drive plates, the drive and driven plates of the clutch pack inside the coupler itself are uh, fit an extremely close tolerance. And the ambient temperature is actually going to affect their coupling coefficient. So the four-wheel drive module needs to know what the air temperature of the coupler assembly uh, actually is. And it does so through uh, a thermistor uh, that's mounted on top of the assembly there. You can actually see it. That's item six. That's the uh, facility for the electrical connector of that. So just in case you were wondering what that Appreciate was. It. This is not a Suzuki uh, product. This is actually a Mitsubishi Outlander uh, uh, drawing. So uh, here is the, uh, the coupler bolted onto the uh, rear differential assembly itself. Um, there's no real need to go through any of the parts here, but it does give you an appreciation of the, uh, the stack of clutch discs. Appreciate that there is drive and driven discs. That is to say that um, the drive discs are actually keyed to the housing that will rotate with the propeller shaft, the input side of things. And of course, the driven discs are keyed to the output side of things. So when they're actually compressed, the two are actually coupled together and the drive could go from the propeller shaft to the differential. How much drive will actually be transferred will be a function of just how much compression on the two, on the, uh, two clutches, that is to say the drive and driven clutch discs themselves. You can see there's multiple discs actually inside of there. Um, here's the electromagnetic coil itself. Uh, it's operating uh, an, uh, an electromechanical mechanism that will actually take a small electric current and actually translate it to quite a bit of mechanical force in order to compress the, uh, the uh, clutch pack to the degree that we need in order to couple the drive. So in two-wheel drive, there would be no coupling, of course. 
in uh, auto, it would be a matter of how much uh, slip uh, the front wheels are actually experiencing relative to the rear wheels. That's carried out via the wheel speed sensors, of course. Uh, forward it to the ABS module and ABS module uh, via the CAN bus to the uh, to the four wheel uh, drive module and of course in four wheel lock of course the maximum degree of compression uh, that the system could offer would be uh, uh, offered up in order to compress the clutches to the point where the drive will simply go straight through and we'll get a 50 50 split uh, between the front and rear wheels. So that's just a look at it, the system close to reality. Again, this is a Mitsubishi product, not to be confused with the with the with uh, what we're actually considering the SX4. But again, they're all pretty much the same, uh, guys. There's tons of, tons of vehicles out there that use this configuration uh, with respect to carrying out their all-wheel drive system. Uh, and appreciate, guys, that the, why the clutch pack and not just a, a, a straight engagement or or uh, release uh, a certain amount of slip obviously can be offered via the clutch the whole point to the clutch pack right not just there to transfer the uh, the drive but to offer a certain degree of slip when it's required so appreciate on the drawing here guys once again shown in red is the uh, input coming from the propeller shaft um, the red uh, outline on the housing here is trying to convey the fact that the the housing are keyed to the drive discs inside the clutch pack. The clutch pack is sh cl proper is shown here and the uh, control clutch is uh, shown further aft in the assembly but just sticking with the uh, the main clutch here for just a moment and the blue, the light blue color uh, driven discs here guys are actually keyed to the uh, output shaft which is the uh, the uh, differential pinion shaft. So the, when the input comes in uh, if we were in four wheel lock for example um, the degree of compression on the clutch pack here would be uh, complete and um, the drive would simply go straight through facilitating it facilitating a 50 50 split between the front and rear uh, wheels um, if we wanted um, auto control uh, depending on what situation was prevailing on the vehicle with respect to uh, uh, differential speeds between the front and rear uh, wheels um, the degree of control exerted upon the uh, the coupler is under control of the four-wheel drive uh, module as you can imagine there's a duty cycle signal out here which will vary the intensity of the magnetic field uh, via um, a control clutch assembly here which we'll look at in more detail will actually vary the degree of uh, compression which is exacted upon the uh, main clutch pack here uh, altering the uh, just how much transfer of torque would actually transpire depending on the um, the situation that was prevailing on the vehicle so that would be automatic control and of course in two-wheel control two-wheel drive mode of operation there would simply be an open clutch pack here that is to say there'd be virtually no compression on the discs and there'd be a hundred percent slip so there'd be no drive transferring between the uh, propeller shaft and the output shaft or the pinion shaft to the rear differential. Now appreciate when the rear wheels are rotating, obviously this is rotating here guys, it's being back driven. Uh, so there is obviously always rotation between the front housing and the output shaft. It's just if there's no compression on the clutch pack, there's no transfer of uh, torque between the, uh, the uh, propeller shaft and the rear wheels. Looking a little bit more at the control side of things, how do we get a relatively small current to actually exact uh, a very large compression force uh, acting on these uh, this clutch pack here. Well, it's done via the electromagnetic clutch itself, the coil, uh, acting on an armature here, which is shown in kind of cross-hatching pink here, boys. And when the magnetic motive force uh, acting on the armature here, it causes uh, these pilot clutches here to compress and will actually bring back this uh, assembly here shown in orange which is actually the pilot cam there's two camshafts shown in here now there are no traditional camshafts as you might envision when I actually say that appreciate that this is a circular assembly here guys the whole thing's been cut right so we're talking about basically a circular type assembly camshaft it is with respect to the pilot and the uh, main camshaft here they're basically um, um, uh, ramps if you will incline planes um, no really camshafts in the traditional sense but they operate as a cam and the uh, actuating member which which carries the force between the pilot cam 
and the main cam is actually these balls in Appreciate between. Appreciate that what we're seeing here operating in the vertical plane actually doesn't operate in the vertical plane at all. It operates on a, a rotational uh, plane, right? So here's what these are shown in cutaway, but here's what they actually look like inside the coupler itself. You can see they're uh, circular or disc-like um, cam assemblies, right? So they operate um, kind of rotating relative to one another, not on a vertical or horizontal plane, but relative to one another, they're rotating. Um, so here's where the uh, the magic of this uh, coupler actually happens, where a small electrical signal in the uh, in the coil is translated through the pilot clutch assembly uh, into actual serious um, clamping force on the clutch pack itself. In cam again, I've kept the uh, color coding consistent here, boys. Um, but again, operating um, containing a ball uh, within two inclined planes. Um, so in the not actuated position, that is to say there's no uh, transfer of torque actually happening, um, the ball is basically caged between the two inclined planes in the central position. So can you see how small this distance is here? This is what we need to actually focus on because this is what actually provides the clamping force. Um, as soon as the, uh, the four-wheel drive control module uh, sees a differential that needs to be acted on with respect to wheel speed or we're in four-wheel lock, um, the coil will actually energize, uh, duty cycle energize, depending on the degree uh, of um, uh, coupling that we actually require. And what it actually does is, is through the armature acting on the pilot clutch assembly here, is actually rotate the control cam relative to the main cam. So you can see here that what we do is we open up a gap here. Well, can you appreciate, and this is the genius mechanical design here, is because the entire assembly is actually rotating, of course, uh, the ball is going to want to ramp up on both sides of the control and main cam. So can you see that by this ramping up on these inclined uh, planes can impose a huge mechanical uh, clamping force on the uh, drive and driven clutch packs. That's how a small control, electrical control signal, can translate to a massive clamping force on the clutch pack through this action here of the control and main cams. Separating through the incline plane and the ball transferring the, uh, uh, the clamping force between the control and the main cam. And uh, here's what it actually looks like in reality. That's how the all-wheel drive magnetic coupler actually functions.